What about tips for the older aged new grad nurse starting that first job? What's up everyone? Welcome to the show. For those of you who haven't been here before, my name is Sean. I do a daily video on something related to nursing. No rhyme or reason. Probably not going to change. Hmm, where should we begin, gang? It's been a hot minute. Holy crap. Talking about the Hey Sean Show. Facebook Live, every week. Already have a bunch of people coming in on the live feed. Tonight's conversation will be started about the older aged nurse, older aged new grad nurse, starting their very first job. Had a member of the tribe reach out asking me some tips about the older nurse, seasoned nurse, the not young buck nurse, someone like myself. I don't know about you, but I didn't start my nursing career right out of high school. I didn't start my nursing career. I didn't go to college and go right into nursing school. I kind of skipped around a bit to took me a couple tries to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. And lo and behold, I became a nurse in my early 30s and then an NP in my 40s. So I have a little bit of experience when it comes to starting the new job when you're not so young. This particular um Tribe member is actually in their 50s. I won't say their gender. We're going to try and keep it, um, try and maintain some uh, privacy here. They're, they're worried about working, their new grad working on a, I believe, a step down unit. And they're looking for some specific tips on what they can do as the older age new grad. What are some things that are specific? to their age and first of all let's 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 just call a spade a spade um you ain't gonna have the stamina that you used to have okay and the last time i checked nursing is a bit of a physically taxing job so if i'm going to suggest anything it's to be aware of your limit your physical limitations while in your head, you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to tackle these three things at this time and do these things. Yet it doesn't happen. Um, you putter out quickly. You have to make sure you understand your limitations. I want to say hello to a couple peeps in the, tr uh, in the crowd right now. We got a lot of people coming in from the live feed. Um, trying to scroll back through here. We have Sharita, Sharita, Drew, Amanda, Terry. Drew's talking about coffee, big surprise. Man after my own heart. We all know my intimate relationship with coffee. We also have Paige in the house. John, how's it going? Oh, I'm already messing things up, gang. Already messing things up. All right, back in the live feed here. We have Anna, Jessica, Tiffany. All kinds of peeps just dropping in on live feed. Thanks for hanging out with me, gang. Talking about tips for the older aged new grad nurse. Particular tribe member is in her 50s and wanting to know what tips do I have for someone who is of that age starting their very first bedside nursing job. Christine, Cindy, welcome. Welcome to the feed. Welcome to the live show. So, Facebook Live, I'm going to try my best to address people as things happen. My first suggestion is to know your limitations. Your physical limitations are going to, are going to dictate a lot of the things that you do. Unfortunately, this job is physically taxing, so you need to take breaks when you can. I would highly recommend being able to sit down whenever possible. Ha ha, I know, joke's on us. Nurses don't sit down. We don't know what those things 
chairs are called. We only know what a chair looks like. We don't know what it feels like. You need to try and sit down when you can. You need to rest, rest the feet when you can. Recruit help. Get a hold of the young bucks and the young chicks. Pucks? What do you call the young girls? Young bucks? I don't know. What do you call them? What, what, what do I call them without offending anybody? You need to make sure that um, you ask for help from anybody that will help you. And it doesn't matter their age. You just need to recruit team members. Whatever, the ki whatever it is, recruit help. Okay? There's a lot of times where you're going to be ambulating patients, turning patients. You're going to have to get patients up to use the bedside commode. Do we need to go into the details of the physicality of our job? You need to make sure you're recruiting help and you're staying safe. Because a hurt nurse is a is a poor nurse because, you know, you're not getting the paycheck that you worked so hard to get. So you want to make sure you ask for help. Physically know your limitations. Always ask for help. I don't care if it's your first day on the job. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Raise your hand. Stop what you're doing. Go ask for help. Preceptor, seasoned nurse, it don't matter. Call in the orderly or the aide or the tech. Whoever the heck you, whatever their label is, recruit help. Talk to PT, talk to OT, become friends with the therapy crew. They're going to get to know you on a first name basis. Okay? Limitations, ask for help. Those are the two big negatives. That, okay, there's a third negative. Is that you're starting from scratch. Is that you're not, you're not the new kid on the block. You're just new on that particular block. You've been around a couple times. You know how things work in the adult world. You have been adulting for a while. So you kind of got, you got that down. Now you got to learn your new job. So you're going to have to, to swallow your pride a little bit. And become a beginner again. Now you probably came to terms with that while you were in nursing school. So that's probably not that big of a deal, but we need to say it out loud. Once again, you're going to have to get used to being the new person and not knowing a freaking thing. So that's the probably the third thing I would say. Fourth good thing is the fourth thing is that you are not the new kid on the block. You have experience. You have a boatload of life experiences under your belt. So guess what? Utilize them. Make it your strength. Make it your resource. You're going to be working with other new grads, other new nurses that have no idea how to interact with difficult people. They have a difficult time with confrontation. Or they, they're still learning about time management skills. Or maybe they need a little bit of assistance on organizing your day from the time you wake up to the time you leave your shift. Maybe they need a little bit of help with how to talk with a family member or talk with a patient on a particular educational topic. You have a lot of life experiences that break down barriers where newer grads, younger aged newer grads are going to have a really difficult time. You've already been there, done that a few times. So you become the learned colleague. They're going to help you with the stuff that you don't if you have no clue with. Let's be honest here. If you're in your 50s, the internet and all things computers are probably not your strong suit unless you have literally taken the classes and you have forced yourself to learn these new things. I was one of them. I'm only in my mid-40s, but I grew up in an era where we learned how to type on one of the old typewriters, you know, the oil, you could smell the oil in the room typewriters. Yeah, those are the things I learned how to type on. Everyone else that I work with these days, yeah, they learned on a computer, on an electronic keyboard. So... There are going to be strengths and weaknesses that you're going to have that are going to complement your co-workers. And you need to start feeling those out, figuring out what it is that you need help with 
and what it is you can help others with. You know, some you know, there's going to be some life challenges out there that the newer nurses, this is their very first adult job. They all of a sudden have to start adulting, and nobody showed them how to do that. You get to do that. You get to show them some of the some of the things that you learn the hard way, and vice versa. If I had to give any other tips or tricks when it comes to being a experienced, someone who has life experiences, someone who has who is not a new a newer aged new grad would be take care of yourself, take care of your health. Make sure that you take the adequate amount of rest you need. In the live feed, there's someone who had mentioned compression socks. Compression socks are my best friend. When I first started this job many years ago, compression socks were kind of an option. Never thought twice about them. I actually used them in my, you know, act, like other activities. For those of you that remember, I used to do CrossFit. Used to. I was a CrossFit trainer, I was an Olympic weightlifting coach, and we used compression socks for recovery after a grueling workout. And by pure accident, I think I wore a pair of compression socks to, to work because I didn't have anything that was clean, and it was the best thing since sliced bread. To wear compression socks, the difference in how your legs and your feet feel from not wearing compression socks to wearing compression socks is a completely different experience. My legs and my feet felt so much better, so much more refreshed. And I, you know, maybe it's just because I'm getting old. Maybe I have an element of heart failure. I don't know. But the swelling in my legs and in my feet is almost not there when I wear the compression socks. So... Someone made made a made a great comment in the in the live feed talking about uh, tips for um, um, night shifts. So that's another thing that experience you know, a experience age will teach you is how to manage the night shift, how to manage the sleep schedule. There are um, seasoned individuals out there that may or may not have a few tips on how to sleep during the day versus sleeping in the night, doing the whole flip-flop thing. So another thing that will help as a advanced new grad. We're going to go ahead and leave it at that. Does anybody have any other tips for this particular tribe member who's asking about tips for the, um, ex the experienced new grad, for someone who is up there in the age bracket when they're starting their first job we're talking about a new grad a tribe member who is in their 50s and starting a job on a step down unit interested in any other tips any other tricks any other suggestions that will help them as someone who has who is not in their 20s who is in their 50s starting this job any last minute suggestions gang Before I move on to the first question of the night, I think someone asked, Anna is asking a question that we can answer that maybe we can help answer for her. Just scrolling through here. Um, Anna's talking about uh, having toddlers at home. Yeah. So that's another thing that, um, you know, the um, returning students, they have an advantage on time management skills because they already have a family. They already have kids. They already have a mortgage. They already have two cars and, you know, all kinds of other debt that the younger nurses may not have. So that can also help. Um, I think Anna was asking specifically if we have any tips for the new grad with no previous experience working in the night shift. So here's what I'll say, Anna, about working the night shift. Anybody have any last minute thoughts on the first topic? If not, we're gonna close the door on that one and move on to the next topic. I wanna remind everybody that we do this Facebook Live every week, every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to try and do our best to stick to it. If you are catching this on the record, 
I'm hoping that if you have a question, you'll leave it down in the comments section so that I can come back and save it for later. For those of you that don't know or have not discovered, I started an entirely new website. It's actually called Hey Sean. The website is called HeySean.info. HeySean.info, like information. HeySean.info is where all of my answers will eventually reside. So if you have a question that you are unsure if I've answered or not, or if you have a question that you'd like to post, you can head on over to the website, HeySean.info. You can contact me and send me your questions. The website is entirely searchable. It's searchable by category, and it's searchable by topic. So if you just go to the website into the search box, you enter in the term ICU, you're going to come up with, I think, three or four questions I've already answered that have to do with ICU. Interested in questions about new grads? Entire category on new grads. Or maybe, just maybe, you're interested in advancing your career and maybe becoming a nurse practitioner. Yep, answered some of those questions too. Make sure you take a look at it. When you're done hanging out with me here on the video, whether live or you've checked this on the record, head on over to the website, take a look, send me a message, let me know what you think. And by all means, if you don't want to go all the way, all the way over to that website, send me a message here. Leave me a comment down in the, sec in the, in the comment section. Post your question. That's how we learn. It's how we grow. So, new grad night shift tips. The first thing I would think about is know your sleeping pattern. How well do you sleep, first of all? And when when do you have the hardest time sleeping? Is it falling asleep? Is it staying asleep? Because I ended up becoming someone who has a really hard time falling asleep. So you need to pay attention to that sleeping habit when you go to bed, whatever that time is. You need to experiment. When you're first starting out as a night shifter, you need to experiment. Are you a person that leaves, goes home and has to go right to bed? Or are you the kind of person that needs to be up for an hour or two to unwind, maybe go work out, do some chores, do some schoolwork, visit with the family, and then lay down? Or are you someone that has to sleep all the way up until your shift starts, you get up and go to work? Or are you someone that it needs to get up an hour or two before to orient yourself, stay up, do your chores, visit with the family, and then go to work? Are you working an 8-hour shift, a 10-hour shift, a 12-hour shift? All of these things matter when it comes to developing a schedule for working the night shift. Are you working straight nights? Are you flip-flopping? All of these things matter. Someone had left a uh, comment here, John, saying... Um, he said what he always did was turn off his cell, blacked out the bedroom windows, as well as maintain a sleep schedule. Yes. Um, sleep schedule is important. It's not always feasible for some, especially if you're flip-flopping or you're double-backing. The flip-flop is what usually hurts the most, so you got to take that into consideration. Um, I agree with blacking out the windows. However you can accomplish that, whether you go and buy those real fancy schmancy expensive panels where you just put towels up over the windows. doesn't matter. You know, the, the noise level of your neighborhood is going to affect your life greatly. So you should plan ahead. Plan ahead for the busyness of your neighborhood. That is something that nobody paid attention. Nobody told me about when I was doing night shift. Do you have neighbors that are up and about? Do you have, do you have professional um, neighbors that work a 9-to-5 job and that it'll be mostly quiet? Or is it the summertime? You're going to have nothing but screaming kids, screaming memes that are going to be um, out and about around your neighborhood all hours of the day because, I mean, that's what normal children do. So, you know, do you need earplugs? Are you going to have to use music? Are you going to have to use headphones? Do you have to wear an eye shield? Um, yes, you have to silence your phone. If you're in a busy neighborhood, you're probably going to have to put some signs up on your doors or on the windows saying that you work the night shift and then you know if the UPS man comes, you're not going to ring the doorbell or knock on the door. You're going to have to communicate with your life, as in family and friends. 
communicate with them and let them know, hey, I'm, you know what, I'm working night shift on Wednesday and Thursday, so don't try and call me during the day because you're gonna wake me up when I'm sleeping. Communicate with your other, with your, with your, um, with your life. Make sure they know that you should not be disturbed. One of those, you gotta make sure you put your phone on do not disturb. That's that unfortunately is it's very hard for some people to do. I don't know why. A couple tips I would give for while you're at work on the shift. Try and stay away from caffeinated things when you get past way, when you get halfway through your shift. So if you're working a 12-hour shift, after the 6-hour mark, whenever you start, just try and limit yourself to caffeine products if you can. These are all in the ideal world. If you have to down a monster or another pot of coffee to get through the shift, then you do it. Just be just be willing to put up with the consequences of you're going to be up in the middle of the morning or the middle of the day having to empty your bladder. Or if you're an older gentleman like some people, you're up every two to four hours so you don't get a whole lot of sleep. So plan ahead for that. If you're interested in staying awake, if you're feeling sleepy, get up and move around, walk around, do go exercise, walk some stairs, or you could do what a lot of nurses do and actually take a nap during your break. Nothing wrong with that. Take a nap during your break. Set an alarm on your watch or have a colleague come and wake you up in the break room. Take a 10-minute power nap, 15-minute power nap. Some people that works out great, it killed me. I couldn't do power naps. Power nap always made me feel worse. So that wasn't something I could do. Stay away from high fructose sugary treats. Most people on night shift, if you work in a in a less busy environment, staying awake can be tough sometimes. You start you go into zombie mode, so you start snacking on food and you buy all the sugary stuff because you think sugar will keep you awake or the salty stuff will keep you awake. When it's just the opposite. It it will you'll crash and burn quickly. So you want to have healthier foods if you can. Foods that are easily digestible, foods that are lower in simple sugars, um, and if you can, drink a, a decent amount of water. It's amazing how dehydrated you get on night shift. So pay attention to the amount of water intake you have. Same rule applies. you got to pay attention to your water intake when you're getting towards the end of your shift because you're going to try and sleep during the day and all of a sudden you're up in the middle of the day having to go to the bathroom. Maybe that's just an old guy problem. I don't know. Anyway, does anybody have any other thoughts, any questions talking about the night shift right now? Scrolling back through some of the comments here. Not seeing much here. Talked. We talked about the um, a experienced individual, someone who has, who is uh, not a young tip, uh, not a young buck starting a new job. Talked about several tips in regards to starting a job as an experienced, aged new grad nurse. And then we had a chat about some tips for working the night shift as a new grad. Um, funny story. Here's what's really funny is that when I first started nursing, and this was after nursing school, I thought the night shift, night shift, I thought the night shift ended at 11 p.m. Like the night shift was 3 to 11. I didn't realize the night shift was the midnight shift. Yeah, that was a rude awakening. Nobody told me about that, especially when I applied for the job. Call it innocence, or maybe just call it just being completely blind or trying to ignore the obvious. But um, working that first um, night shift in my uh, my first ICU job, that was kind of tough. Sharita is suggesting to prepare your meals in advance. Oh, yes, absolutely. That goes without saying, my dear. Um, I guess I should say it out loud, duh. Uh, if you're working the night shift, you want to prepare your meals ahead of time. One of the things about working the night shift, if you're not in a large teaching facility, and even in some lar and in many large teaching facilities, ain't no place open for you to buy food. And you don't get to go, not unless you have time to leave the hospital and go to your local, 
you know, Taco Bell in the middle of the night before 3 a.m., you're going to have to figure out what to do about food, snacks, lunch. You're going to have to prepare. Invest in a pretty good lunch bag, you know, one that, um, one that it has, you know, that, that, um, maintains temperature. That might help. Good tip, Sharita. Drew is being a tad bit sarcastic, big surprise in the, uh, live feed right now. Drew is a, uh, a former wound care nurse and a tech genius who has, uh, um, utilized his nursing skills in, um, other ways has stepped away from the direct clinical, um, I don't want to say bedside, but I guess we could say bedside Drew. And um, he utilizes his um, nursing expertise to help others in the um, tech arena. And he's quite the expert. If I'm not mistaken, yes, I believe Drew has a couple apps coming out, nursing apps, and also a digital magazine. Maybe I let the cat out of the bag on that one, Drew, but I, I think that uh, I think that's supposed to be coming this month. If I've missed it already, I'm sorry. Um, Drew is, is saying that um, you need to become good friends with the cafeteria peeps, especially when you're working the night shift. Um, not going to lie, I used to do that too. So, <laughs> um, Anna's saying that she agrees with Drew. Uh, she became very good friends with the uh, cafeteria lady who used to hook hook her up with some extra bacon. Now, that's the kind of relationship I want to have. There's two things in this world that matter. It is coffee, which we've already talked about, and bacon. Coffee and bacon. If I'm, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think I might have mentioned that in my Instagram story today. Y'all follow me on Instagram? If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should probably check it out. I do drop some knowledge bombs, and I do my best to try and share a couple things while I'm at the bedside. Something that I can do that is HIPAA compliant. It's difficult at times, but I try. All right, gang. Rolling things up. Ooh, coffee-flavored bacon. Coffee-flavored bacon. I'm not sure. Dawn is, is suggesting coffee-flavored bacon. I'm not sure I'd be a fan of that. Hmm, coffee-flavored bacon. Nah. I'm going to stick to just traditional bacon. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I can mix my bacon in my coffee flavors. Now, I could dip my bacon in my coffee. Definitely have done that before, but I can't mix the taste. I can't mix the flavors. I can't mix the textures. It just doesn't work. Eating something other than bacon that tastes like bacon just puts me into like a seizure. I just can't do that. Like bacon flavored gum I've seen and bacon flavored like candy. It just it doesn't compute up here. When I smell bacon, I want to eat like the real texture bacon. And let's not even go. Let's not even go down the turkey bacon road. I'm, my heart's going to stop if I even start talking about turkey bacon. But we're digressing here. I think we're going to wrap things up, gang. Facebook Friday. Hey Sean, Facebook Live, every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, answering your questions. Be sure to bring your questions for next week. And if in the meantime you are checking this video out on the record, please make sure you leave a comment down below and maybe you'll be bold enough to leave me your question. And what do we say at the end of every video that I do, that we do? Make sure you check your own pulse first.